You're tuned into the Awakening Zone Radio Network, your news and information source for empowered spiritual awakening. Welcome to Inner Speak Soul Adventures, your consciousness connection. Jean Adrian and her guests will be providing you the tools to empower you in creating the life that you desire. Now, here's your host, Jean Adrian. Good evening, and welcome to Inner Speak Soul Adventures, your ultimate consciousness program. Every week we open the portal to the field of pure potential so that we can walk together hand in hand into the universe of conscious creation. I am Jean Adrian and I'm your host and your tour guide on this adventure and it's my mission to bring you information from many sources to assist you as you make your choices and raise your vibration because together we are creating this new reality. I'm thrilled that you've chosen to join me here on the Awakening Zone and I commit to you that I'll bring forward every week information that's going to challenge you to grow, and also I'll provide you with power tools to use as you do. I invite you to visit my website, jeanadrian.com, and while you're there, please remember to sign up for my newsletter so that I can send you your link for your free online subscription to the online version of my InnerSpeak cards so that you can clear away the things that are holding you back all by yourself in the privacy of your home on your computer. And if InnerSpeak is a power tool that you want to learn more about after you experience the online version of my InnerSpeak cards, then uh, you can get certified as an InnerSpeak Breakthrough Life Coach. Uh, That certification program is available in the classes section of my website. Or you can just contact me, Jean, at jeanadrian.com to find out more about it. And also, if you haven't already signed up for my Telesummit, The Realities of Creation, I invite you to do so. It's all free. We had eight great speakers this fall, each discussing a different reality of creation, and all of their presentations are available for you to listen to on our website, realitiesofcreation.com. And we're now getting ready to do the lineup for the January Telesummit. We're going to have 10 speakers um, talking about different realities of creation. So um, go to realitiesofcreation.com. Also, please be sure to join me this Friday, November 21st on www.healthylife.net for my new radio show, which is called Power Talk. My guest on Friday will be Dr. Mark Mincola. He's a natural health practitioner. We're going to discuss holistic healing, and the last 20 minutes of every show will be dedicated to you, the listener. I'll be doing readings, clearings, and balancing like I used to do on this show, and all you've got to do is call in. All the information's on the radio show page on my website. And then in January, when Awakening Zone goes off the air, I'll be taking this show to a weekly show, and it will be on Thursdays at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. So that's HealthyLife.net is going to be the new network that I'll be going to. If you're listening to us tonight on Blog Talk Radio, we'd like to invite you to join us on AwakeningZone.com because this is where you're going to find some of the most progressive programming in the Empowered Awakening Movement on one easy-to-navigate website. Plus, if you're listening live, you can participate in our chat room where I can field your questions and turn them over to my guest, and you can also interact with other listeners. That's come on over to awakeningzone.com. So tonight's soul adventure is about life. It's about life and gratitude and guidance and listening. And my guest is coming to us tonight all the way from Berlin. His name is Kazimir, and he is an intuitive. He assists people in communicating with their guides, with their intuition, and with their heart. And he also assists people in deepening that inherent connection and communication that we all have um, so that we can dive into our deep emotions and discover and express our true beingness. 
Kazimir died at the age of 16, and he came back. So I can't wait to hear that story and what he learned from his experiences. And he's going to be offering readings this evening. So call on in, area code 714-364-4335. So welcome, Kazimir. It's so great to have you on the show. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for that opportunity. Oh, absolutely. So you had a near-death experience when you were a teenager, um, and you're not all that old at this point, really. Um, so can you tell us what that was all about, and what was it like to um, to die? What happened? Well, it was pretty intense. Mm, that That's the one thing I can tell so far, and it was so rich in itself. Actually, it happened when I was quite young. Actually, I was 16 years old. Mm-hmm. And I would say from that moment, my entire life changed. Not that my life has been so ordinary in the beginning. It was always somewhat, I would say, uh, more open to energies and to all those things. But my uh, rational mind wasn't understanding it so much before. Mm -hmm. And after that experience, I guess, um, that experience was so intense that I had um, to take somewhat like, um, I would say, a break from yoga and meditation for a few years because um, just before that experience I was doing lots of yoga and meditation. And um, basically it was just, I would say, the perfect evening. Like I had done everything. I had a nice day. I was learning a lot. I had a lot of like, um, well, done sports, basically I had the perfect day in so many aspects. I was so happy with that day. And maybe you know that feeling of tiredness when the light mm-hmm. has a different color. And you're really happy about the day, but it was also somewhat like, I would say, a, a full day. So you're yeah. happy to rest. Okay. So I don't know how long that day was, but um, it, maybe it was like something yeah, like 10 in the evening or something. And I was just taking a shower and planning on going to bed and I was laying down in my bed. And you know that feeling when you sit on a recliner mm-hmm. and, and you lean backwards, that, that, that movement feeling? Right. Yeah. So I was laying in bed and I was, my, my mind was knowing that I was laying in bed and I was actually feeling like I was reclining into the bed. It's a really, really weird experience. And all of a sudden it was like, I don't know if it was a noise or a feeling. I guess it was both. And my whole perception and state of feeling changed. So there was no light in the room, and it was, I don't know, about 10 or something in the evening. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I had this, like, 360 perspective of the room, and I was somewhat like being this light bulb floating in this corner and seeing everything at the same time, and everything was illuminated by nice light, but, but not in this way like a light bulb does in our dimension, I would say. Right. It was really weird. It was feeling really, really warm. And I didn't really identify with that light bulb. But later on, I understood that it was my soul. But I was feeling connected to everything, but strongly connected, like as if it was a part of me. But yet I had an identity. But it was also really, really slow in the process. Like I could navigate it, but I wasn't. It was more happening. So I was seeing that body, but I wasn't only looking at that body, which was my body, I was looking at everything at the same time. And I guess it must have been like two, three or four hours. And in that time, I was moving slowly along that wall in my room to maybe the middle of the room, I would say. Mm -hmm. And there was this conversation. There were those, I would say, three figures. And they were somewhat loving and authoritarian. And there was this discussion, I would say, not more like a conversation about crossing over. And it was to my left. And from that point, I was somewhat moving in the middle of the room. And they were showing me some, I would say, projections in the air about possible timelines when I would be staying. And one of them was showing actually uh, my mother, and she wasn't so happy that I was dying. I was like, wait a second, I cannot basically, first, I don't want to leave. And second, I cannot leave my mother behind like this, basically, when I'm dying and stuff. And they said, basically, which was surprising back then to me, like, that that's not your problem. She's also a grown soul. That's, that's basically also her choice. She knew those possibilities before coming in here. And they were saying, to your left, there's this portal. I wasn't seeing a portal, but they were saying, you, if you go over to the other side, you cannot reactivate your body. But I was like, wait, I'm not going over without 
seeing it. I want to have a look there. And they're saying, yeah, it's not <laughs> possible. And we advise you to go. I was like, wait a second. It's really difficult to reconstruct this conversation because I wasn't seeing them. But right. they were really, really present. And they're really loving. But there was also some kind of like, yeah, authority or some kind of sense of power or some 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 guidance and some structure in it. Almost like yeah. a legal structure or something. It was really weird. And I, I don't like it personally so much, this kind of legal structure and too much order. So I was like, mm, wait a second. This feels really good that I don't really like to buy basically a cat in a bag. I wasn't saying it in this way, but it was also like, wait a second. And they were saying, yeah, you have free will, but we advise you to go. I was like, no, 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 no. I want to stay. And they said, most likely it's not going to be so pretty. I was like, wait, wait, wait. And they were also asking, give us a reason. Yeah, why do you want to stay? And I was already there, was almost saying, like, why do I need a reason? But I was like, okay, how about relationships and love? Because this was the thing that kind of came to my mind and which interested me the most. Mm -hmm. And there was some, somewhat like looking at the checklist, though I couldn't see them, I was feeling what they were doing. So it's really, really strange to explain. And all that happened during that really strong feeling of love and that 360 perspective. It was as if I was watching a movie, but being the main character, but at the same point, not being the main character, being the table, the, the furniture and everything. The only thing which I was like, I would say a little bit more differentiated with were those three other beings. And I was also surprised because the, the feeling of the personality, I was surprised that I had a personality and I was also somewhat confused at that point because I was understanding at some point that my body was me in some sense, but now I'm this different like a light sphere or something which has also a different personality. You know? Like, what is this? Like, it was completely like, I don't know, changing all the context and everything. And... At this point, I was like, okay, I want to stay here. And they're like, okay. And I was like, okay, being somewhat happy. And then I snapped back in my body. And at this moment, this experience was getting really intense. Like talking intense in a physical way, in a mm -hmm. panicky way. Because my entire body was like, I would say, start by describing the way my heart was feeling. My um, heart was racing so bad. And then was stopping to be. And my entire body was shaking. And I was like, I would say that somewhat traumatized, but not traumatized in this um, bad way, which lasts, but more like being shocked by fear of dying in that yeah, moment. Yeah. So I was laying there almost as somebody has like a seizure or a fever attack or something, and my heart was beating so fast and it was stopping. I didn't have any watch or anything to look on, but I had the feeling like it was stopping for 10 or 20 seconds and then starting again to beat and then not beating for five seconds and then starting again to beat. And I was like, oh, I have to survive this, which is really weird because I was just actually dying and deciding mm -hmm. to come back. And and for some reason in that moment, by having this heart racing and my body shaking, I was like, okay, okay, I have to survive this, I have to survive this, which is somewhat weird when you look at it from the, the perspective backwards. And actually... Maybe you notice when you are in some kind of panic situation or some kind of um, fight or flight mode, your body really knows what it needs to do to survive, basically. And so I was oh, having one thing in my head, bananas, 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 basically to, to seize the muscle cramps and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was somewhat managing to get out of bed and to make it somehow to the fridge. It wasn't so easy because all my muscles were like trembling and shaking. And was still somewhat half there in my mind, I guess. And I was managing to get a few bananas and somehow eat them on the way back to my room. Basically, it wasn't that far. It was somewhat, there was some sand and basically the kitchen was somewhat outside in the garden and my room was, I don't know, 30 meters from the garden away. And it was quite early, actually. I don't remember if it was still, I guess it was still somewhat dark. It wasn't really dawn. It was somewhat like, I don't know, 3, 4 in the morning or something. And basically, I was making it somewhere back to my bed. My body was really being in fear and shaking. I was like, okay, okay, try to sleep, try to sleep, try to basically be alive, which was so weird. And I was falling asleep. And the next morning, I was waking up somewhat late in the day. And I was actually even asking myself if it was real. It was so intense that I was waking up and touching the blanket and touching my body. And being somewhere there where 
what was happening, was it happening, what is all of this, basically? What is my body, what is this, this, this bed, what is this life about, who am I, what am I, what was this? And I was just putting it aside for a little moment and saying, okay, okay, just get out of bed, look around you, have some breakfast, and just let it rest for a while, you know? And, well, I wasn't surrounded by people who had much intellectual knowledge of spirituality. I, I mm-hmm. lived um, back then in Africa with my parents in Mauritania in an Islamic Republic. And those people are really, like, warm-hearted and really spiritual from their heart, but they don't necessarily have the words to express it. If they are showing their spirituality, it's more by living from the heart by example. And there, I would say not so many psychic people around there. So it was really hard to communicate those experiences. And they're saying, yeah, you just had some mosquito fever. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> True that I had this disease once, like a long time before, but I never had any flashbacks. And this disease is known for those flashbacks. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, so for those who, who are not somewhere there in this consciousness, I would say, okay, maybe I had this mosquito disease, whatever, let's not talk about it. And with all those years passing, actually integrated more and more and more of this experience. And I was like, yeah, actually, I've been changing from that moment in time. Somebody was telling me, actually, that I was forgetting myself or at some point I had forgotten myself. And I guess this is a good description of what happened to myself in that moment. I guess this um, coming back into my body must have been opening some different energy channels in some ways and then activating like parts of my consciousness which were not there before. So were you psychic before this near-death experience or is this something that came on to you um, after you uh, got back in your body and, and basically proceeded on with your life? Well, <laughs> proceeded on with my life is also <laughs> nicely put. I would say I always had um, problems with the, the normal life in the sense that I was different than all those other people. I felt way too much. And it was really, really difficult because, for example, being growing up like 11 years of my life in Berlin and going to school, there were so many things I felt that I couldn't explain. For example, I was entering the subway and I was feeling all those fears of those people. And in the beginning... Um, because I wasn't brought up necessarily with the perspective that um, I could feel those things and that they are real. So I was born psychic and I had a strong connection to my guides when I was younger. But basically we had to chat together, if you want so, that Mm -hmm. I would start to live my regular life when I go to school and that they will disconnect for a little moment and then I will find them back, basically. So they will step like, I would say, one, one, one step back at that point, mm-hmm. so that I have this somewhat more like normal childhood in school. But actually, this more normal childhood in school was never really happening. <laughs> I was always <laughs> somewhat extrasensory, but after that near-death experience, I became like so much more open to it. And for a little period of time, even more locked down mentally because it was so intense that I was like, okay, no more meditation, no more yoga. <laughs> I just want to be normal. You know, this was so strong. Like, whoa, <laughs> I need a break from all this for a while. Well, you probably had to integrate what had just happened to you. You know, yeah. I mean, that was a pretty intense experience, it sounds like to me. It was so intense. I mean, this, this, this sphere of light was different to me. And I understood mm-hmm. actually that it had so many lies I cannot count, and they were making a overall personality of me. And yes. so this life I'm living it as Casimir right now is just like a little, little like dust corn into that light sphere when I will be dying as information, which will add to the overall personality. And it was so huge to actually to hear those things. You, people can uh, empathically feel a little bit of it or may get an idea, but to really like being, I would almost say, pushed into that experience or like thrown mm-hmm. into this. It's almost as if you're being thrown out of a plane or somewhere out of nothing. You're just sitting there on your chair and just like drinking your lemonade or whatever or some juice. And then all of a sudden the, 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 the ground opens and you're in free fall or something. <laughs> wow. So, so you yeah. basically have dedicated your life now um, since that time to helping people, right? Yeah, definitely. Actually, I've always done it, but in the beginning Mm -hmm. it was more on a subconscious level. And um, with time passing, I've more and more integrated into my consciousness and into my, I would say, intellectual faculty. 
policies to explain and articulate it. So when you uh, were conversing with these three beings, when you were in the near-death state, did they tell you that that's what you were supposed to do if you chose to stay here? No, they were not. They were more coming from that perspective, it's better to go, but you can experience. So it was all about the experience. It was not that's mm. your mission. It was like this place is a place to experience. But they were yes. not even saying it. It was more like an attitude they were having. Interesting, interesting. Wow. So um, we've got a full switchboard of people who would like to get little readings from you tonight. Are you up for doing some of that? Oh, of course. Okay, so the first one is Patricia. And Patricia, I'm going to pick you up now because she called in before we got on the air. And let's see if I can make this work. Okay, Hi. Patricia, you are live. Hi, thank you so much. And You're um, very I welcome. Really so, Kazmir, really she's all yours. <laughs> Hello, Patricia. Hello. I've really enjoyed listening to your story, and um, uh, yours sounds so similar to mine, except that I, I didn't die, but I've had a lot of out-of-body experiences and didn't know what was happening to me. So I appreciate you coming forward with that to validate me. Um, and I wanted to ask you, um, you kind of answered it when you said that your guides told you that this earth plane is for experiences because I've been wanting to know um, what's going on with me and, um, and, and my life's mission. I, I'm starting to hear and see and hearing multiple voices in my dreams, and the guides are giving me messages. And I wanted to find out if there's anything else that um, you could tell me uh, as far as where I'm going with this, if that's appropriate. How do you feel when you hear those voices? Oh, wonderful. They... Um, they validate, they give me truth, and um, they let me know things that are going to be happening, and they give me answers to my questions. But I haven't had a full-blown um, um, conversation. I would love a full-blown conversation. They're just like small sentences, mm -hmm. I guess. I'm just well. where I'm starting <laughs> What I feel is when you start talking about your conversations, basically, and your encounters in your dreams, you have a nice warm energy circulating a little bit more in your face, and it's a little bit more in your arms as well. I wouldn't say so much upper body, and also a little bit in the feet. And those things are going to get stronger the, the more you open up to them. And you were right on the part about experience. But for you, it's also a little bit, I would say, almost more a mixture between experience and, and some kind of, like, mission, I would say. Okay. I, I get this feeling that for you, you, there are people, they come in with a gift. For example, drawing. And you give them a pen, and they, they just, in no time, they draw something extremely amazing and beautiful. And I have the feeling you are, I would say, in that sense, a person that is gifted with a particular gift that is either already on the way to unfold or is coming out in the near future. Okay. How exciting is that, Patricia? That is very exciting <laughs> um, because um, everything that's happening with me in the dream state and, and me seeing and hearing um, I love hearing these beings, and um, it's it's been a beautiful experience. So I'm happy. Mm. Do you have any specific question um, or things you want to think about and want me to tune into? Just um, I want to just you know know about this mission. <laughs> I want to carry out the mission that I um, originally before I incarnated you know, want it to do on this earth and any, any, anything that, any clue you have? Well, as for now, 
they say more that everything is going to unfold. I don't get any specific image, if you want so, right now, except this warm feeling which is like moving more to the face. And there's a nice warm energy being there. So there's a nice warm loving presence. So it's unfolding more and more. But there are no images I'm getting right now. So basically oh. you're already quite... But we, we can narrow down the focus if you want to, if you think about certain things which you have been like um, thinking about that might be this or that. And I can tell you it's rather this or that. What's that? I, I didn't understand. Um, what um, he said was, I, you know, that if you can, if you have some questions that have been coming up for you, Patricia, about where you think your mission is going, do you think and it should it should I do this or should I do that? And he can help you to narrow down the focus. Oh yeah. Um, well, um, I I I don't know. Right now, I'm just going towards living a very simple life. I'm like getting rid of a lot of things and going more towards simplicity, and and I truly believe that that's where I need to be. I've simplified my diet and everything, um, and I'm just um, just clearing, doing a lot of clearing. And, uh, yeah. I want to make Sounds sure. Sounds like you're in the gestation phase, Patricia. You know <laughs> that you're you're getting ready to give birth to a new aspect of yourself, which is yes. really cool. Yes, it's exciting. Okay. Mm. So what uh, especially the is... word simplicity um, resonated really warm with your energy. So that's something which which you maybe want to go a little bit more into, which you really feel is um, basically every time you g- get a sunshine energy feedback, as I'm often tuning into energies, I was tuning into your energy, and especially when you said that word, your energy was getting warmer. Yeah. So every time you feel some sunshine, that's that's the direction you want to more go into. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so um, just to, to top it off, I'm. I guess I'm going in the right direction. Not to uh, question myself. Yeah, always. But I wouldn't put it in in, in general terms as um, as words. For example, for example, not to question myself when you were saying this. There was more energy flowing your way. So I would say I had this tingling feeling in my hand. And when you're more in alignment with uh, a certain path, for example, simplicity, there was no tingly energy in my hand. There was just a warm feeling. So I would say simplicity and following your inner simplicity or your inner well-being from this warm, loving energy standpoint is even better than um, putting it onto onto this um, general topic as, um, I would say, you know, Okay. Yeah, for me it's just all about compassion and kindness and being simple and um, just uh, serving the earth and the animals and um, talking with people about Mm -hmm. what I believe. Um, There's a lot of joy in that word of serving people and animal and earth. Yes. There's a joy that comes from your heart. That do you maybe have some tongue tingles when you talk about this? Um, I feel very light, and I feel like um, sometimes when I talk to people, I feel like it's being channeled, like there's another being speaking through me, and sometimes I don't remember what I say. <laughs> um, mm. but don't don't um, feel, feel bad about it. I was feeling this little constriction in your heart area just right now. It's it's not a must. To remember everything, the, the the quantity you remember is just what is supposed to be remembered at that time, and it's going to, I would say, come more and more of that experience. And sometimes the integration is gradual to a different, um, I would say, line of time, so it comes slowly in. So everything is as it's supposed to be, I would say. By this. so don't don't. Um, I'm not saying that you're judging. Though those words are a little bit too hard for this, but. Um, just try to relax more into those feelings that this is all right the way it's unfolding naturally. Okay. Yeah, okay. just be, Patricia. You're a human being, not a human doing. <laughs> yeah, this is a perfect yeah. 
You know, it's taken me a long time to to undo that. I've had to undo a lot of things that mm-hmm. oh, oh, I was programmed yeah. to be. Mm. Yeah, I got rid of all oh, that. Yeah. Good for <laughs> and you. I'm just being so. Thank you. I really mm-hmm. enjoy your show and your story. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. I'm going to stick you back on hold so you can keep listening. I hope that helps. Yes, very much so. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. And, and Kazimir, we've got another caller. Uh, I didn't get a, a chance to screen for the name, but it's the caller at area code 206-459. And I'm picking you up now. So who am I speaking with? Uh, hi, this is Catherine. Hi, Catherine. How are you? I'm good, thank you. This is the first time I've listened to your show. Oh, cool. Well, Glad I got in. Absolutely. So, Catherine, I'm going to turn you over to Casimir, and you can ask him um, any questions that are on your mind. All right. Hello, Catherine. Hello. So how Hello? can we help you, Catherine? Um, I would like to ask him about a moving so I'm just nervous about finding a place. Uh, I can hear all the re- all the details of a new job and a new place to live. Yeah, Catherine, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Did you hear my questions? Yes, I did hear it. So, can you be a little bit more specific? Um, finding a job. I'm nervous about moving. Yes. And how do I, how do I, um, finding a job and finding a place to live. Yes. But, um, I mean more specific in, do you have two job options or do you have two locations between you can choose? It's always easier if you narrow it down between two locations. I can tune into your energy and tell you your vibrations about the certain job or area and the general vibration of that place and so on. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm like, moving. I'm I'm moving to San Francisco. Okay. Yeah. And I have no job and no place to live. Yeah. I'm moving and to what? San Francisco. Be peaceful and calm. The job <laughs> and no place to live feels a little bit less calmer there. So, um, why did you choose to move to San Francisco from where you're currently located? Um, I lived there before about ten years ago. Mm-hmm. and I like it there a lot, and I do have friends. I have a temporary place to stay when I arrive. Oh. Mm-hmm. The old place you were staying in is more like this, a little bit, I would say, spiritually maybe, those words are maybe a little bit too strong, energy um, drowning place. So it's good to move to San Francisco energy-wise. It's uh-huh. way more peaceful, I would say, for you. Oh, Okay. Yeah, this is what I was getting about the old place and when you were talking about that place. And um, I I would like to answer a few more questions for you if you want to. And I can really help you by, um, well, it's it's much easier because I'm somewhat between my brain and my heart space right now because I'm tuning into your energy and the energy of those places. So it's a little bit difficult to hold a conversation while doing this. But I guess we we will do a, um, like um, a good job when you give me like uh, alternative questions or you think about certain things and you ask me which one is rather for you or not. So I'll ask her questions for you, Casimir, and that way you can tune into her energy when she answers. How's that sound? That sounds even more amazing. Yeah. So Catherine, um, what sort of work would you like to do if money was no object? Um, what would you want to do when? Um, in, in order to um, uh, to make your heart sing? Um, I've been working on starting my own business mm-hmm. in, event, in events, event Like planning. event planner? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's um, always hard to do in a new city. You know, I have all my contacts here. Okay, so erase that and hard to do thing. <laughs> exactly, I know. That's exactly why as soon as it came out, I was like, uh, you have to, yeah. That so, out. so you're getting ready to create a successful career for yourself in San Francisco um, yes. in event planning. Yeah. So, Casimir, um, how does that feel for her? Well, in general, event planning, yeah, I was getting cold hands and my heart rate uh, was getting up. So, I would say it's stressful. 
and it's unresting and it's maybe not most in alignment with your internal being. But it can be exciting and successful only because they are those energy signatures in your body. It doesn't mean that it's not going to be pleasant for two, three, four years or five years. Um, and in San Francisco in general, it's going to be better. But um, do you have any alternatives to that one? Maybe something that resonates deeper with you. Uh, well, can you see what that is? As for now, I'm not getting any vision. So let me um, let me ask you another question, and let's see if this will help. Um, so, um, what sort of events have you done event planning for in the past? Oh, uh, fundraising for nonprofits. Okay. Um, so and private there, and private any any you name it anything I've done okay. it. Okay, so if there was another aspect of fundraising that might make your heart sing more, um, what might that be um, to get you out of the old paradigm of what you've done in the past, but mm-hmm. still holding with um, where your experience is. Um, I think maybe that might help Kazimir to um, pick up more information. So, so if there was another thing other than um, fundraising for nonprofits, but as an event planner um, that you might enjoy, what would that be? Right, that was my past. I don't do that anymore. Okay. So I'm I'm not interested in working for nonprofits. Excellent. I'm, okay. Yeah. So, so that's I'm, probably why I, he's not. That's why. He, probably why he's picking up kind of the scritchy energy is because there's too much of the old in the past. You know what I'm saying? Mm, actually, I'm feeling no. like the, the non-profit feels, feels pretty good to it. And okay. And the non-profit, there's even this happiness from the heart and this exciting, I would say, there. But mm-hmm. there's this, um, I would say, um, how should I articulate it? It's really difficult right now in the moment. This um, well, there is one part of you. I would say the inner being who really resonates with that. Um, I would say nonprofit and organizing event. And there's this other part. I would say the intellect and the being who is incarnated in the body here, basically more the body part and the intellect part, who is saying, "I want to do something more exciting, more more interesting, or more, more different, right. just for a change." And I, I perfectly know this feeling, like myself, I'm living it as if they're like three children to parents, basically. The body, the soul, and the mind. And all of those children want to play, basically, and have the experience. And I, I, I know myself in my life sometimes signing up for experience which are not so ideally for those other two, and I'm enjoying my life. So this is this is um, a subtle vibrational difference. I'm not saying that it's not, not the right thing to do, but I'm saying there are probably things, if you tune in a little bit deeper to your core being, that are going to be an easier success there in that area. Catherine, have you because ever considered doing um, wedding planning? Yeah, that's what I, I, that's what I do. I do that. I do okay. everything. Okay, cool. Yeah, because um, that's one of the things that I'm seeing uh, uh-huh. You know, there, there's there, I'm seeing some interest around that, and it's interesting because just this last week I was in San Francisco, and uh-huh. I met a man there who is the most amazing florist, and he does mm-hmm. floral designs for weddings and for events, and I want to hook the two of you guys up. That's a perfect yeah, idea. I don't. That's, that's great. I don't. I, I don't. I do creative events. I don't do cookie cutter. I don't do white weddings. You know, I like exactly. to do things. Exactly, and, and that's I think like what, gay, uh, you know, gay wedding, gay weddings, or cultural weddings, or you know, I don't do the standard cookie that's cutter. That's why I think you and Kiko yeah. would really hit it off because he does great. some of the most amazing creations. Um, so if you will contact me, Jean, at jeanadrian.com, then Great. I will get the two of you guys in alignment. Because I, oh, have a fe- I just have this feeling that the two of you, um, and he already has some established clientele in right. San Francisco, and I have a feeling the two of you guys could um, maybe make something happen. Wonderful. What was his name again? His name is Pico. His first name is Pico. Oh, that's a great name. Yeah. Yeah, he's from the Philippines. Okay. Oh, great. So pop me an email. All right, thank you so much. 
Okay. Yeah, I sure will. I'll do I'm it right now. You Thanks back so on much. Hold. Nice to talk to you. Okay, I'll listen. Okay. And um, so we have another caller. It's area code three six zero seven three three. So who am I speaking with? Hi, my name is Lori. Hi, Lori. How are Hi. you tonight? Uh, not that great, but. So what's going on, Lori? Um. Well, uh, well, one thing I'm worried about is um where I'm going to be moving to. Mm-hmm. And I looked at this one place a couple of days ago. It's kind of a basement suite and I'm not sh- I'm just not sure. Mm-hmm. You know, if I should, you know, if I should consider moving there or if it would be good a good fit or if I should so hold off. Do you do you need to move? Is there something I guess pushing I don't. you to move? Well, I just don't like it where I live, really. I live okay. kind of far out, and mm-hmm. I'd kind of like to be closer to civilization, and I'd kind of like to just not have neighbors, you know, kind of. I, I'd kind of like to have a place where I don't have, a, you know, like a standalone building without neighbors, and I'm just not jiving with people too well, it seems, and I don't know. But- so, Casimir, what are you picking up for Lori? Well, I'm actually picking up that the new place to, to move on is not so good. It's not a complete no, I would say, from the vibration. But it's a rather the a, a better place to be. And actually, the place you are actually at right now from your vibration, from your energy, is quite, I would say, peaceful. There are not so many like electromagnetic interferences or like uh, a lot of noises around energetically. So... Actually, your energy is more at peace at the place where you are right now than the place you want to move to. But it doesn't mean that in the that other location there isn't a nicer place. Yeah. So, yeah, I was thinking that it might be a little noisy there. Mm. Well, it's it's always the thing between our energetical beingness and our mind, and and what what kind of plans we have and we make. And the interesting thing is the the more we actually follow an energy, the more successful we are in life and the more things unfold like naturally. I'm not sure how to do that. Well, what does your gut feeling say when you think about this place you want to move to? Like from your own sensations, describe it in your own words. Well, it was cute and all, but I kind of felt claustrophobic there. I kind of felt like, mm-hmm. the, you know, without the front and back door, there was only, like, the one one door. And right, and if, if the people didn't, decided they didn't like me for some reason, it would be really bad. Mm. Well, that's never a good thing. Basically, people, well, the word should is also strong, but basically should love you for who you are. And if they don't, basically, they are not the right people for you. And it's always better to go a different way. Because if you're not appreciated for what you are, the core being the core sense, no matter what you have like realized or what you're doing at the actual moment in your life, it's not really um, a nice thing to spend time with those people. So whenever you have the choice, and you always have the choice, best spend time with people who love you for who you are and who appreciate what you do. Yeah, I was kind of... Um, I was kind of upset today because I, I, I go to to this one church group and pray with these people and I, you know, mm-hmm. told them a lot of stuff that, you know, my personal stuff and the one lady today goes at this uh, one meeting and she goes, oh, well, how come nobody, how come you're having pe- trouble with people believing you and stuff and, like, you know, like, she was going to start getting all judgmental on me and stuff and I was like, uh, it was really disturbing you know. Yeah. So Where I don't was know. that? Pardon? Where was that? Was that in the church or in the other area? Yeah, the church thing. Mm. Well, this is what I have seen in churches so far, that people are really open and really, I would say, loving to people to a certain point. And if you don't follow their, uh, I would say, ideology, 
they're somewhat more distant or even start to get judgmental. Well, that was my personal experience so far. So if you, for example, you don't want to join their um, rights or different things, they really, really, well, tend to close the door they have opened that other people don't open in regular life so much. Hmm. Is that what you were experiencing there? No, I I felt like... uh like she just started judging me on all my problems that I went there to pray about. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know. That's actually an unusual thing for churches because in churches everybody is actually welcome to open their hearts and to, to ask for guidance and help. Right. So well, maybe maybe the particular not a lady so often. Pardon? Maybe that's not the church you want to go to so often. Are there any alternatives in that area? Yeah, there's probably like, al- there's not a lot of alternatives here, mm-hmm. but there are alternatives. But it was just this one particular woman. You, you know, know one of the things that I have found, Lori, is when somebody um, uh, gets that way with us, it usually um, what what it's all about is um, that that at a at an energetic level, they're wanting information from you. And so one of the things that I have found helpful for myself, because I have issues with boundaries, um, because like Casimir, I'm an empath. Um, Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I have found helpful to me when that kind of thing happens is I just take a moment and I sort of go within and I move myself up to the level of my higher self and I just ask my higher self to give that person whatever the energetic information is that they're wanting from me and to give it to them in a way that they can handle it, and then I just let it go, rather than um, allowing them to judge or even feel attacked by them. I just yeah. let my higher self handle it, <clears throat> and yeah. I would suggest that you might try that um, because it it's really made a huge difference for me once I started doing that. <sighs> because in the past, what it would happen would be um, in a situation like what you're talking about. I would get intimidated, and then I wouldn't go back. I would leave, and I yeah. wouldn't go back. You know, and I found that once I start letting people get the energetic information that they need from me without kind of sucking me dry, because if I let my higher self handle it, you know, then it um, it doesn't take anything away from me. It's like giving them a Xerox copy of the information that I have, whatever that might be, and I don't even need to know what it is. That's and um, you just do that with your intention. Hmm. Yeah. So you might want to try that, but I think that, you know, uh, uh, Cosmere has, has given you some good information that perhaps the, the place that you looked at this time isn't the right place for you. Yeah. Yeah. So I I hope that helps. Yeah. I'm going to stick you back at home so you can listen. Hmm? Yeah. There's so many spiritual people out there who are really looking for like minded people to reconnect. And there's so many nice people on this planet. So it's so easy to connect through Facebook, through those groups, for example, to like minded people through Teal Tribe or different, uh, I would say, spiritual groups. So, uh, who maybe even might be living in your area. You might be surprised how many people are around in this world. They might just be living, like, next door. Yeah. Okay. All right, mm-hmm. Didi, I'm going to stick you back on hold so you can listen Thank to you. the rest of the show. And You're welcome. Kazimir, um, can you yep. uh, let people know how they can find you, how they can find out more about you, your website, your Facebook page, things like that? Will you tell the oh, audience, yeah. please? Oh, no problem. Um, you can always find me on Facebook. And you just type in Casimir, Kurt, or you go to www.casimirslightworks.com or you find me also like on YouTube, yeah, on Casimir Kurt, basically same name than on um, Facebook. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm also on Twitter and on Google+. Plus. So basically you either type in Casimir's Lightworks to Google or just Casimir Kurt and you'll find me. Fantastic. And before we run out of time, Casimir, um, is there any advice that you would like to uh, leave with the listeners tonight that might help them to get more in touch with their guides and in touch with their heart and their emotions? Yes. 
basically always follow your gut feeling and dive deeper into those feelings and really trust those feelings because basically they will not leave your, lead you astray. It might be for a job situation and it's always easier for your gut feeling to have like a A and B question, for example, whether this job or that job, or should I go, shouldn't I go? And mm -hmm. basically if you just continue on that emotional path and asking your own emotional guidance and you don't need to be an empath or a psychic to do, um, I would say, this, this um, I would say basic emotional guidance system, we all have it. Some stronger, some a little bit less, but it always works. And the more you ask it, the more it will answer you, I would say. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, um, because I know it's the middle of the night for you in Berlin, um, but we really do appreciate you taking the time to be with us here tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I enjoyed it. My pleasure. All right. And listeners, um, next week I'm going to be broadcasting um, an encore show. It will be the interview that I did back in April with Pam Grout, um, and she's the author of E Squared, and her new book is out now, which is called E Cubed. So um, I will be playing that interview so that you can hear about um, her work, and, and she talks about different tests that you can do to prove that the universal laws really work. Um, the reason why I'm playing an encore show is because I'll be traveling, because we're moving into, in the United States, into Thanksgiving time, and um, I'm going down to spend Thanksgiving with my daughter and her family and my little brand-new seven-month-old grandbaby. So that's what I'm going to be doing next week. And before we run out of time, I just want to take a moment and talk about the holiday season because um, I know that as we move into the holiday season, that's a time that can be really kind of interesting and challenging for so many of us. Um, it's a time of going back um, going home and joining up with family, and many times what that does for us is it brings up all of our issues that were unhealed from our childhood. And um, so sometimes it can be very stressful and very painful. So I've kind of got a little cookbook recipe thing that I want to offer up to you tonight before we run out of time on some ways that you can move into the holidays and, and have them to be a little bit more joyful and a little bit more graceful for you. And the first part of that is to figure out what are the needs that you would like to have met um, over the holidays. Are they needs of being accepted, of being loved, of being listened to, things like that? What are some of the needs that you've had since you were a child that didn't get met? And then I would suggest to you that you make a commitment to meet your own needs internally rather than going to Thanksgiving and Christmas with your family expecting the members of your family to appreciate you, to love you, to listen to you, to respect you, those kinds of things. These are all emotional pieces that need to be done within you at the gut level, in your own heart. And um, I would ask, I would suggest to you that you will have a much happier holiday time if you take the time to figure this out before you go home, before you, or, or if, if you're having the family come to you, before you have the family join you. Because you know that old definition of insanity, it's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. So this time, this year, if you go consciously into the holidays and understand what needs you have that need to be met and then make a plan to be responsible for your own internal reality, to be responsible for meeting your own needs, and then also returning all responsibility for meeting the needs of others back to them. Because one of the games that we get caught up in over the holidays is trying to second-guess what everybody else wants and doing that for them rather than letting them meet their own needs. And so if you can figure these two things out and then just hold that space, stand in your own power, stand in your integrity and model that energy, what you do is you give all of your family members an opportunity 
for conscious growth and you get the conscious growth for yourself. So check it out and give it a try. And then the following Tuesday, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, I'll be back, and my guest that week will be Reverend Temple Hayes. She's been on the show before, and she's coming back again to talk with us about her brand-new book called When Did You Die? So check it out. And tomorrow you can also catch a full day of great shows here on The Awakening Zone. So get on the network early tomorrow. And until next time, remember, people who take responsibilities for their lives create the realities they desire. And until next time, ciao. You've been listening to the Awakening Zone Radio Network, offering insights and inspiration for our evolving consciousness.